Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pierce coming to you from Baltimore. A number of Western-based media outlets are reporting that Iran and 5 plus 1, that is the five permanent members of the Security Council at the UN, and Germany remain in a deadlock on key issues in the nuclear talks with Iran. The negotiations aim to produce a deal that would ease economic sanctions on Iran if it agrees to halt its disputed nuclear program short of bomb-making capability. These talks are even more important today if Iran is going to unofficially work in tandem with the U.S. and the Gulf Alliance in the fight against IS. Here with us to talk about where we are at in the negotiations is Mehdi Saram. Mr. Saram was born in Iran. He came to the U.S. to study at the University of Michigan. He then went back to Iran and became assistant professor of nuclear engineering at the University of Tehran. In 1981, he worked for the Department of Safeguards at IAEA before becoming a U.S. citizen. Then, since 1988, he has been working for the U.S. nuclear industry, and he has over 30 scientific publications, including his book, Nuclear Hypocrisy, Lies, and Deception. He's joining us from Carlsbad, California. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. So let me start by establishing something very basic. Uh, what most people don't realize in the West is that th there are nuclear energy needs in Iran. Parts of Iran is suffering from water and electricity shortages, yet you don't see this aspect of it covered in the Western press. Can you describe what some of the local energy needs are in Iran? I'll be happy to. Uh, Iran is a big country, population 78 million. If you take an average person in the Western world, France, US, we need about a kilowatt per person, a kilowatt per person, you and me. Iran, based on this number, needs 78,000 megawatt, 78 million kilowatt. And they don't have it. Uh, Iran has water shortages. And actually, the previous regime of the Shah had this vision that although Iran has lots of oil, nuclear energy for peaceful purposes has a lead of 10, 20, 30 years. And we better start on this. And they did. So Boucher plant, after 30 some odd years, is producing electricity for about a million people. There were supposed to be two of them. So in general, if you look at U United Arab Emirates, UAE, the Persian Gulf area, they are building four large 1,400 megawatt nuclear power plants with the help of South Korea. Somebody would say UAE has so much oil. Same thing. Oil will run out in 50 years, 60 years, 80, 80 years, give and take. So. Iran needs nuclear energy from a Boucher type commercial power plants, the peaceful application to promote and enhance economic growth in a country. Parts of it are desert like, parts of it don't have access to water and electricity. I hope that gave you a, a short answer to your question. Yes. Um, yes, Mr. Saram, um, you have over 50 years, as I said, 50 years of experience working on the issue of nuclear energy development here in the U.S. as well as in Iran, also at IAEA. What do you think is causing the most recent set of delays in coming to a negotiated solution? It's uh, a good question. Uh, as I lecture at various universities, this is how I start on my own by thanking you for the question. Iran and the U.S. had a very serious relationship, animosity. They weren't talking. It's for the first time, it's a miracle that President Obama, President Rouhani have started talking. That was last November. They finally came to an agreement. So my quick response to you is a problem which has been with you and me for 35 years. Can it be resolved overnight? I don't think anyone should expect that. These are complex problems. National pride is, 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 is being brought up. So last November, P5 plus one, as you mentioned, they reached what we call a JPA, Joint Plan of Agreement, for six months. Six months started January 20th, even to July 20th. 
they resolve a lot of issues, big issues, but two pending issues are dragging and now the deadline is November 24th. My gut feel is it will be extended unless there are miracles, which I don't believe in. Well, but and both parties have all, already sort of given head nods at uh, the fact that it may be delayed. Yeah, let me give you now the reasons for the delays. Number one, the number of centrifuges is being discussed. U.S., of course, U.S. leads most of the discussion. They want to reduce it. Iran says, for the reasons we talked about, I'm going to be building more nuclear power plants. By the way, Russia will only give low enriched fuel for the Boucher plant operating today until 2021. So Iran has about 19,000 plus minus centrifuges. It used to have only 200 when the sanctions started. So between when sanctions started in 2006, number of centrifuges went up from 200 to 19,000. US T5 say, hey, we got to reduce this. Iran says, all right, we'll talk. How about $100 billion plus and minus of my frozen money? US has released quite a bit of money. So the two diametrically opposed parameters are how much money will be released to Iran in return for Iran to agree to reduce the capacity, meaning number of centrifuges. Here you're referring to the Iranian assets that have been frozen in the United States, yes? Everywhere else, too, by EU, too. Yes, it's about $100 billion. $4 billion was released a while back. $2.8 billion was released last year. That's only like 6 7% of it. So close to 90 plus percent of Iranian frozen assets are still built by P5 plus one. It's not one particular country, it's, it's all of them, mostly US. So the argument is, give me more money, they should reduce your number of centrifuges. And this probably will not be resolved by November 24th, as you said earlier. So um, one of the possibilities here is that Russia is currently providing fuel for the Bashar reactor in Iran. Why not push uh, for a deal so that it would provide for enriched urani uranium to be imported from, from Russia and elsewhere even, that, uh, rather than producing it domestic, domestically? Well, Wouldn't this be a solution? Mm, yes, but, but I give you, in defense of Iran, I give you three more reasons. One is they don't want to be dependent on a country like Russia. I'm not sure if you want to be dependent well, on any. Well, why not? They're already dealing and having a lot of energy deals with Russia. Why not? Correct. But the reason is Iran may buy a nuclear power plant from other countries other than Russia that has a different design of the fuel. So Iran says for the 510 whatever nuclear power plants that I want to build, in Iran in the next 10, 20 years, I want, maybe out of national pride, I want to be able to have control of my future in my own hands. These are the reasons. You're right. Russia could get, say, I give you fuel for this plant for the next 50 years. But that's just one plant. How about all the other plants that Iran is going to build based on what you said, that Iran needs electricity and water for its people? So it's not a simple solution that we go to Russia and say, please give us the fuel for our nuclear plants. Iran has shown to the world that it's capable to produce tons of low enriched uranium, up to 5%, which is its rights under MPT. By the way, enriching uranium in any country in the world under MPT is legal. Nobody can tell any country why you're enriching uranium for peaceful purposes. So that's one reason. Uh, Russia could solve Iran's problem for Boucher, but Iran is looking at 10, 20 years down the road. Maybe they buy a plant from Japan, from South Korea, uh, from Germany, from America. How do we know how things will develop in the future? Okay, Mehdi, let, let's take this up uh, in our second segment. Uh, we'll continue the discussion on what the energy needs are, are, are in Iran and how we can come to some uh, negotiated solutions to address them. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.